Hi parents, welcome to the five minute tutorial with Miss Abby and we are here again today to talk about trace. One of the activities that we did this week in class was one on a practice skills reading practice test number four and I'm going to show you an example of the question that was being asked and then I'll show you the article that we got this from. Okay, basically it says what happened at Yosemite National Park in 1999. Based on the graph, what immediate effect did this have on bear incidents at the park? Use details from the graph and the text in your answer. Okay, so that was the question that went along with the reading of Don't See the Bears. Okay, I'm going to try and let you see this. Okay, hold it up there for a couple of seconds. Gives you an idea of what's going on. Okay. Now, as I had discussed previously um, on the Class Dojo message I sent out to you, trace is something that we use every single time we have a discussion question. We've been teaching this since the first of school. They even learned it last year. And most of the students say they know how to do it. However, we're not always effective in doing this. So I wanted to help our students get a little more effective and feel like with your support we can all work together towards this. So. Um, again, the question reads, what happened at Yosemite National Park in 1999? Based on the graph, what immediate effect did this have on bear incidents at the park? And it tells students to use details from the graph and the text in our answer. So when using trace, the first letter is T, and T simply means to think about what is being asked of you to do. Okay, and we've got a couple of things that are being asked. It wants to know what happened in 1999 at Yosemite National Park, and then it wants us to tell what effect it had on the bear incidents according to the graph. So, um, I'm just going to read a sample answer for you so that you can know what a good response would sound like. Okay, um, in 1999, officials at Yosemite National Park installed bear-proof garbage bins and gave visitors metal lockers for the food. We've just used the R part of trace. They restated the question in the form of a question and they answered it. They told what happened in 1999. Okay, like I said, we have to cite text evidence. So a student would then go on to say, according to paragraph four, they also started educating visitors about the risk of attracting bears with food. Okay, so they've used the first part of that. But then there's more that's being asked. It says, based on the graph, what effect did it have on bear incidents at the park? So a student would then add to their description or their response by saying, according to the graph, these efforts led to a big decrease in the number of bear incidents. Okay, at this point, students would need to go a little bit further and explain their answer by giving the examples of saying, in 1998, there were about 1,600 incidents, but in 1999, there were fewer than 800. And then they could close out with saying, these numbers show the reader that there was a drastic decrease in bear incidents after they implemented these changes. Okay, so it's pretty basic and pretty simple, like I said. The T is for to think about what's being asked. The R is to restate the question in the form of an answer. They would take the question mark off and turn that into a sentence. Okay. Um, C would be simply citing your text evidence. And the E is just simply an explanation. Um, by doing these steps, we can tell that a student has thoroughly read, that they thoroughly understand what is being asked, and also that they have a thorough understanding of what took place um, when they are being asked any question from history to science, social studies, um, language arts and their reading. Um, there are so many ways that we use this each and every day in the classroom. So, um, next week I will be adding to our video response times and uh, thank you again for your five minutes with Miss Abby.